Okay, so good afternoon again, my dear students. So I'll be discussing numerical descriptive measures. Okay, so to recall, uh, statistics has two fields. Meron tayong descriptive and inferential statistics. So descriptive statistics, pag sinabi natin descriptive from the root word describe. Okay, so if you recall last time, um, uh, our activity is on constructing the frequency distribution table and the variables involved there were all qualitative. Okay, so ibig sabihin pa nagpo-profile tayo ng, ng uh, we do when we do profiling and then ang variables natin qualitative either nominal or ordinal, usually gumagawa tayo ng nagko-construct tayo ng frequency distribution to describe our respondents on those given variables. This time, um, what if yung variable, profile variable natin naman ngayon is quantitative, okay? So, um, usually ang practice pag gumagawa tayo ng research, especially on profiling, pag numerical na yung data natin, we obtain the descriptive measures and then we use these measures to analyze or to describe our respondents. Okay. Okay, so ang numerical descriptive measures, this is classified into okay four okay so we have meron tayong central tendency meron tayong okay so meron tayong ayan meron tayong central tendency okay central tendency ibig sabihin if you're if you have a data which is arranged in an array ibig sabihin naka-arrange siya from smallest to highest pag nag-compute tayo ng mean median sa kamod most likely, nasa center siya ng data natin or it's in the middle. Kaya siya tinawag na central tendency. And we also have your fractiles, okay, which will be discussed further later. Okay, so aside from measures of location, we have also our measures of dispersion. Ito. So we have these measures of location, the first one. The next one is measures of dispersion. So um, again, we'll be this, uh, usually uh, you might ask, Bak Ma'am, bakit meron pa tayong measures of dispersion? Hindi ba enough yung measures of location to describe your data? Okay, or your set of respondents? Okay, usually class, ang measures of location, this is uh, obtained when you are describing one set of data. But if your objective is to compare two or more sets of data, dito na papasok yung measures of dispersion. Okay, so specifically, if you want to know which among these groups is more homogeneous, more stable, more consistent, hindi na siya masasagot ng measures of location. So, dito na papasok yung measures of dispersion. And also, we have your measure of skewness and then measure of kurtosis. Okay, so let's discuss the three measures of central tendency. Let's start with your mean. Okay, pag sinabi natin mean, your mean is an interval statistic. So if you recall the levels or scales of measurement, uh, the lowest level is nominal followed by ordinal, interval, and then the highest is ratio. When we say interval statistics, that means we apply, we can compute the mean if your data is in at least interval scale. So kasama doon yun ratio. So interval and ratio. And then the other feature is that each value contributes to the final result. So wala tayong dapat i-skip na value in computing for your mean. And thirdly, this is affected by extreme values. So ano implication pag ganito? Pag meron tayong mga extreme values, ibig sabihin meron tayong mga outliers. These are values that are extremely high or extremely low. It is suggested na we don't use the mean to describe your data. Kasi most likely, it will not represent your data set. Okay? So, ano ngayon ang kailan natin gagamitin ng mean? So, gagamitin natin ng mean pag wala tayong extreme value. And usually, class, pag wala tayong extreme value, ang data natin is normally distributed. Okay? Normal, ay, normally distributed data has no presence of extreme values. Okay, so let's go back to my question. Anong gagamitin natin ngayon pag meron tayong extreme value? So, dito na papasok yung median. Okay? So, median is an ordinal statistic. So if your variable is in at least ordinal scale, pwede natin makuha yung median or the middle value. Uh, this time, this is unaffected by extreme value. So what do you mean by unaffected by extreme value? Ibig sabihin ito, since this is the middle value, pag meron kang very low or very high value, yung middle value nyo will still stay in the middle. Okay? So, unaf kaya nga siya unaffected. Therefore, if you have extreme values or outliers, 
it is appropriate to use the median to describe your data or your respondents. <clears throat> And then we go to the mode. Okay, pag sinabi naman mode, it is a nominal statistics. Ibig sabihin, we can obtain your mode if your data is in at least nominal scale. So, kasama na po doon yun ordinal interval saka ratio. And then, this can be obtained by mere inspection. So, sometimes you don't need to compute actually. Okay, titinan lang lang natin yung data and then the value or the item which has the highest frequency is your mode. And this is not unique. So, this will be illustrated later kung bakit Bakit hindi unique ang mode? Okay. Ayan. So, let's have this data set. Okay? So, we have three data sets here. So, I want you to look at data set A and then notice the values given. Okay? So, in the values given, you will notice na meron tayong low value, the extremely low value, whereas ito from 88 to 91, magkakalapit lang siya. So, given this set of data, naka-red, naka-highlight ng red yung median, ibig sabihin, the appropriate central tendency to describe data set A is your median. Kasi meron tayong extreme value, extremely low value here. Okay? So, if we're going to describe data set A, we're going to use the median. Okay, bakit hindi ta natin gagamitin yung mean? Kasi usually, when you interpret your mean, ang implication natin is bawat value malapit lang sa 83.5, which is not. Because if you're going to locate 83.5, it is somewhere here, okay? So, it's not e even in the middle, di ba? Your 83.5. So, hindi siya, it will not uh, be a, re a representative of your um, uh, of your whole data. Ayan, so let's go to data B. This time, sa data B naman, you will notice na magkakalapit yung values natin from 80 to 82. And then, meron tayong extremely high value. Again, again, given this data, okay, we're going to use the median to describe or your respondents or, or the items under this set. Okay? Bakit nga? Kasi meron tayong extreme value. And if you're going to locate the, the, the mean, which is 84, again, it is somewhere here. Hindi naman siya nasa gitna. Okay? And then, let us look at the data C. So this time, wala tayong extremely low or wala tayong extremely high. Halos magkakalapit lang yung mga values natin. Okay. So computing for your mean and locating this in your data, it is in the middle. Okay. Situated in the middle. So tama lang na, if you're going to describe your respondents under this data set, sabi natin, ang mga score nila malapit lang dun sa 88. Okay. Ayan. And then I want you to look at your median. Okay, so if you recall, sabi natin dun sa definition natin kanina, your uh, your mode pala is not unique. Okay, so if you look at data A, okay, yung data natin sa data A, if you're going to look, may mga values ba dito na naulit sa data A? Okay, so you will notice na may naulit tayong value, di ba? Okay, so tanggalin muna natin to. Okay, so tutinan natin yung data A, na ulit yun 89 natin twice. So yung pinakamaraming beses na ulit, that is going to be your mode. Okay? Sa data B naman, you will notice na may dalawang value na dalawang beses na ulit. That's 80 and then you have 81. So uh, make uh, take note now, in choosing your mode, you choose the value with the highest frequency. So kung sakali lang may tatlong 81, dalawang 80, Ang mode natin dyan will be 81. Okay? Ayan. And then, I want you to look at data C. This time, ang ma sa mga values natin, wala siyang naulit. Okay? So, therefore, none. Or, pwede natin ilagay dito, no mode. So, we don't write, we don't indicate there's zero because zero is not part of your data set. So, if there's no mode, we either write none or no mode. Okay? Okay, so let's go to fractal. So fractals is another uh, measure of location. So may tatlo tayong fractals. The first one is your percentile, which divides your data into 100. So pag sinabi natin, divides your data into 100, ang value ng percentile natin, magre-range siya from 1 to 100. So hindi pa pwede magkaroon ng 120th percentile or a negative percentile. So it will range from, uh, your percentile will range from, Okay, 1 to 100. Yeah. Okay, where your I is from 1 to 100. Okay, suppose 
IRA score of 85 receive a rating of 90th percentile. So how are we going to interpret this? Okay, 90th percentile means 90% of the scores are below or equal to 85. So 90% nung nag-take ng exam, ang score nila mas mababa dun sa score ni IRA. So IRA actually uh, belong to the top 10%. Okay, so that's how we interpret your percentile. <clears throat> Next, we have your decile. Decile divides your data into 10. So, pag sinabi natin uh, divides your data into 10, ang value ng decile natin, ang, 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 ang uh, rank ng decile natin, mag-range lang siya from 1 to 10. So, hindi pa pwedeng 12th decile or 15th decile. So, hanggang 1 to 10th decile only. Again, if IRA score of 73 received a rating of 7th decile, what do you mean by that? Okay, so 7th decile, ang equivalent niya in percent is 70%. So 70% of the scores are below or equal to 73. So please don't forget the word below or equal. Okay, below or equal. And lastly, we go to quartile. Okay, quartile divides your data into 4. So Four lang yung possible niyang uh, subscript. Uh, this would be one to four. Okay, one to four. So, hindi pa pwede magkaroon ng fifth quartile. So, hanggang first, second, third, or fourth quartile. Take note sa quartiles natin, class. Kasi parang ganito siya. Yeah. Okay, three, four. Ang first quartile natin, this refers to the 25, first 25%. Okay? Second quartile refers to your first 50%. So the, if you look at the uh, line, yung second quartile natin is equivalent actually to your median. Okay? And third quartile is 75%. And fourth quartile is your 100%. Ayan. Okay. So, if IRA score of 80 receive a rating of third quartile, what do we mean by that? Okay, so tingnan nyo lang. Third quartile is 75%. Therefore, 75% of the scores are below or equal to 80. Yeah, so that's how we interpret your fractals. So, now let's go to measures of dispersion. Take note, sabi dito, measures of dispersion determines the homogeneity, stability, or consistency of two or more groups of data. Okay, take note of these three, homogeneity or homogeneity, stability or consistency. How do we determine which of the two or among the groups is more homogeneous, more stable, more consistent? So sabi dito, the lower the value, okay, the lower the value, the better. So the lower the value, more homogeneous, more stable, more consistent. Okay. So, there are four measures of dispersion. Yung first two, hindi siya masyadong ginagamit for data analysis. Although, yung first natin, yung range, which is obtained by getting the difference between the highest level and the lowest level, ginagamit ito sa pag-construct ng frequency distribution table for numerical data. Okay, importante siya doon. But in terms of uh, measures of dispersion, it is the least is the least and least um and the weakest measure of dispersion. So anong ginagamit natin dito madalas? Ginagamit natin dito class yun standard deviation and coefficient of variation. So what is the difference between the two? When co you you are comparing two or more groups of data with the same units of measurement, okay, we use your standard deviation. So suppose you want to know which of the two groups of students here is more uh, consistent when it comes in to their academic performance, okay? Suppose section A, ang basis natin sa section A, ang data natin sa section A is yung stat midterms score nila and ganun din sa class B. You also have your stat midterm score nila. So ang basis natin is pareho, it's the stat midterm score. So if you want to know which of the two uh, groups of students is more consistent with their performance, we compute for their standard deviation and then our basis would be the, the lower the value, more consistent. The lower the standard deviation, more consistent. Okay, what if there are two groups of students wherein ang available dun sa first group is the math grade and then ang available dun sa second group is the science grade. So, magkaiba, magkaiba yung units of measurement. Can we still determine which of the two 
is more consistent with their performance, with their academic performance. Okay, that's still possible. And uh, all you have to do is compute for your coefficient of variation. Ito, kasi ang coefficient of variation is used when comparing two or more groups of data with different units of measurement. Okay, again, ang decision rule natin would be the lower the coefficient of variation, more homogeneous, more stable, and more consistent. Okay, so let's have this simple analysis. Suppose you have two workers, A and B, doing the same job, and we have these following results. So a mean time of completing a job in two hours, in, in hours for worker A is five hours, for worker B, you also have five hours. And we have this standard deviation, 1.5 so worker A and 5.7 so worker B. Okay, the first question is, who appears to be more consistent in performance? Okay, sino pong mas consistent sa dalawa? Is it worker A or is it worker B? Okay, so it's... It's worker A. Bakit? What's our basis? It's the standard deviation. Kasi sabi natin, the lower the value, more consistent. Okay. What about the next question? Who appears to be more efficient? Sino kaya ang mas efficient sa dalawa? Okay. Is it worker A or worker B? Okay, so our answer is neither of the two. It's actually, oh, it's actually both because pareho silang five hours. Okay, take note class. Ang question natin is sino sa dalawa ang mas efficient? Ang measures of dispersion is not a measure of efficiency. It's a measure of homogeneity, stability, and consistency. Therefore, hindi tayo titingin sa standard deviation. Titingin tayo sa mean time. Okay, so pareho kasi silang 5 hours. When you say efficient kasi, what do you mean by that? You can finish the task in lesser time. Okay, so let's go to the next analysis. The mean time of completing a job for worker A is 5 hours, for worker B is 4 hours. And then they have the same standard deviation. The first question is, who appears to be more consistent in performance? Is it worker A or worker B? Okay, so both because ang standard deviation ng dalawa is pareho. Okay, so pareho silang consistent. Okay, next question. Who appears to be more efficient from an overall point of view? Again, efficiency is defined as finishing the task in lesser time. Is it worker A or worker B? Okay, so you're correct. It's worker B. Kasi mas lesser time. Mas ma complete niya ang job in lesser time. Okay? Okay, so these are the commonly used descriptive measures in providing respondents. We have the mean. It's the sum of the values divided by the total number. It is used when the data are normally distributed. Ibig sabihin, wala tayong extreme value. We also use the median. We also obtain the median. It's the middle value used when data are not normally distributed. Okay, and number three, observation with the highest frequency. That's the mode, standard deviation. And we also obtain the minimum, that's the lowest value. And of course, the maximum, that's the highest value. Okay. Okay, so the question now is, ma'am, ano pong gagamitin namin? Is it the mean or the median? So kasi normally distributed ang data, we use the mean. Pag hindi naman median. But how do we know that they are normally distributed? What if we have lots of values and then ang hirap i-identify kung yung lowest value ba o yung highest value ba is an extreme value? Okay, so the data is subjected to test of normality. Okay, to determine if it is normally distributed or not. Ma'am, ano po ba ang test of normality? Okay. Again, suppose we have this data. So we have the mean, the median, the mode, minimum, and maximum. So we have the corresponding interpretation. So ang question is, ma'am, ano pong gagamitin namin to describe the performance of the 10, 10 students uh, given the test scores in math? Are we going to use the mean or the median? So if you look at the data, baka mag-iisip tayo initially na, ah, may hindi normally distributed ang data kasi meron tayong 8 and parang yung 8, parang extremely low value siya. Okay? So, sabi natin kanina, isa subject natin yung data sa test of normality. Okay. 
Ang meron tayong tatlong test of normality, okay? Sa statistics, you have the Anderson Darling test, the Kolmogorov Smirnov, Shapiro and Wilk. Okay? These are the uh, names of those who who formulated this or, or who discovered this test. Okay, siguro from the from the names of this test, you will know kung ano yung uh, nationality nung naka-discover. So Anderson Darling most likely baka Amerikano to. Yung Kolmogorov Smirnov, most likely, baka Russian. And then you have your Shapiro Wilk, siguro, most likely, si Shapiro is a Japanese statistician. Okay, so our decision rule would be, data is normally distributed if 0 0.05 is less than the p-value, otherwise distribution is not normal. Ma'am, constant ba yun 0 0.05? 0 0.05 is your level of significance. Usually, this is the level of significance used in um, statistical treatments. Okay, so let's proceed. So, yung data na pinakita ko kanina, ito yung lumabas na p-value. Okay, so pareho, ko, pareho naman yung lumabas na result dito sa tatlo. Ang decision rule natin is pag mas mataas daw ang p-value sa 0 0.05, normally distributed ang data. Okay, looking at the result of Shapiro, 0 0.406 is greater than 0 0.05. Anderson Darling, 0.392 is greater than 0 0.05. Ganon din si Kolmogorov Smirnov. 0 0.187 is greater than 0 0.05. So halos lahat naman sa kanila, consistent naman siya, mas mataas sa 0 0.05. Therefore, ang conclusion natin would be, yung data natin is normally distributed. So kahit na mukhang extremely low value yung 8, hindi siya considered as extreme value. It doesn't affect the mean. Okay, so your data here is a normally distributed data. So what's the implication? We use the mean in describing your students. Okay, so implications if the data is normally distributed. Pag normally distributed po tayo, po ang data, wala tayong presence, no presence of extreme values. So in case there are extreme values, they may be very few and the presence of it does not affect, do not affect the mean. So yun nakita natin kanina sa data. Yung 8 doon, Konti lang, hindi naman siya napakarami and hindi naman naapektuhan yung mean niya. So, among the measures of central tendency, okay, ano gagamitin natin? We use the mean over the median in describing the data. And the normality of data leads to the use of parametric methods. Okay, so medyo sa higher na to. Kasi usually, ito yung mga assumptions pag gumagamit ng parametric methods. Dapat ang data natin is normally distributed. And if data is not normally distributed, we use the non-parametric. Okay. So we can skip this one says skewness. This this actually describes the distribution of or the graph of your data. Uh, symmetric is uh, is the same with your normally distributed data. So wala siyang extreme value and magkakalapit lang mean, median, and mode. For both positive and negatively skewed data, ito yung data na meron na tayong extreme value. So for positively skewed, we have the presence of extremely high. For negatively skewed, we have the presence of extremely low value. Okay, so for the first graph here for the normally distributed data for the symmetric, we use the mean to describe your data. Dito naman sa dalawa, sa positive skewed and negative skewed, we use the median. Ayan. Okay? Okay, so let's uh, go to the computation. So I will not be discussing the first four because we have already obtained this using the calculator. Okay, so hindi ko naisa-isahin yung mga syntax kasi we have, we're using different models. Uh, therefore, we, we have different syntax. So just review uh, the materials I provided um, wherein naka-indicate yung mga syntax natin according to the model of the calculator. So initially, di ba, na-compute na natin yung... Uh, now, compute na natin yun. Mean natin. Okay. Then, and then, um, sorry. Yeah. So, di ba, initially, na-compute na natin yun, mean natin, which is 87.22. And then we have also computed for the median, Y75, because this is the middle value. Ito po. Yan. Okay? So usually class, pag ang, uh, sum, ang values kasi natin is an odd number, yung 9, ang rule nito is um, parang yung rank niya, rank ng value, and 
plus 1 divided by 2. So, pag 9 plus 1, 10 divided by 2. So, yun ikalima. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pag ganito kasi, madali lang natin madetect kasi uh, konti lang naman yung data. So, iisa lang naman yung value niya. So, just in case yun sample size natin is even number, and syempre, dalawa yun nasa gitna, all you have to do is just add the two values and then divide it by 2. Okay? So, that's how we get your mean chart. And then, of course, we go back to mean pala. 87.22, we interpret this as the average daily allowance of the students is 87.22. When you interpret your mean, you always mention the word average. And then, of course, the variable that is being used. Take note, the data is on the daily allowance. So when you interpret that, you say the average daily allowance of the students is 87.22. It's important that you mention the word average and the variable that's being computed. Next, we have the median 75. So you don't say 75 is the middle value. Okay, so you say half of the students have allowance below 75 pesos. The other half have above 75 pesos. And then you have your mode. Back at 50 because 50 appeared thrice. Hindi 50 and 100. So we choose the value with the highest frequency. So we say three of the nine students have a modal daily allowance of 50 pesos. And using the calculator, we obtain your standard deviation. So no need to interpret this one. Okay, what about the coefficient of variation? How are we going to compute for this? So given this formula, standard deviation over the mean times 100%. So ang final answer po dito sa CV is 100%. So if we're going to compute for that, substitute lang natin uh, standard deviation 38.16 divided by 87.22 times 100%. Okay, so computing for this will have 0 0.4375. Siguro first four digit lang. Ayan. So again, we continue. So we'll, this will give us 0.43.75%. This value. Okay? Okay, let's go to the next value. What about percentile? Sabi natin, uh, percentile divides your data into 100. So, ito pong denominator na 100. Constant po ito. Hindi ito magbabago. Okay? So, ang magbabago lang is your numerator. Kasi depende kung ano yung naka-assign kong I. And of course, your N. Your N here in our data is 9. Kasi meron tayong 9 values. Okay? Suppose ang hiningi kong value is 90th percentile. Take note, ah, yun I natin magra-range from 1 to 100. So, all you have to do is just substitute. Okay? So, 90 over 100 times yung number of samples natin na 9. So, this will give us 8.1. 8.1 is not the final answer. So, we round this off. This actually is the rank. Okay? So, if you look at your data, alin dyan yun ika? Alin dyan yun ika? Uh, 8 value. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ito po yun, 90th percentile natin. Okay, it's 140. Ayan. So, to interpret, 90% of the students have daily allowance less than or equal to, okay, take nota, less than or equal to 140. Okay? Okay, let's move to the next. Let's have the decile. Ang decile naman, class, constant po yung 10 dito. Palagi siyang over 10. So, mag assign ulit ako nung I or the subscript. So, magre-range yung I natin from 1 to 10. Suppose you're asked to get the 7th decile. Okay? So, just substitute the value. 7 over 10 times 9. So, this will give us 6.3. So, round off natin ulit. So, this will be the 6th value. And the 6th value in our data set is 100. Okay? Therefore, the 7th decile is 100. So, interpreting your value... Okay, so, uh, uh, we interpret that as 70% of the students have daily allowance below or equal to 100. Okay? And then lastly, we go to quartile. So, quartile, constant po yun for, okay? Magre-range lang yun I natin from 1 to 4. So, suppose you're asked to get the first quartile. So, again, we substitute the, I, the 1 to your I. So, 1 over 4 times 9. So, this will give us 2.25 rounded off, this will give us the second value. So, get, getting the second value in your data set, you'll have this one. Okay? So, interpreting this, interpreting your first quartile, we have 
Okay, 25% of the students have daily allowance less than or equal to 50. Okay, so that ends, that ends my discussion. Good luck to your activity.